I think any day is a good day to get mail, but especially Friday. And especially when you're not really sure what's in the slightly gushy package. I know that this package was routed to me through or from Hong Kong, which means it's one of two different things. And I'm glad it only had to come from Hong Kong because this box really isn't up to a longer journey. It feels... Ugh, tired. It feels tired. <laughs> its sides are caved in, the tape is stretched, and it's in some way wrinkled. <laughs> like it has received an end-to-end -end impact, and you can hear the material inside, the book inside, moving around, which means among the things I need to be concerned about is damage to the corners. So hopefully it's all wrapped up type tight in bubble wrap or something, but we'll have to see. So the tape is quite strong and it's in all the places that tape should be, except maybe around the corners. And uh, you know, it takes a little bit of effort to get it open. Just going to fold these flaps back into position and then I will lift the camera over and you can look down into the box as I am looking down into the box and we can both understand what it is that I'm looking at right now. The mystery is revealed. This is from Atlas Games. This is the latest edition of Over the Edge and this is the deluxe edition of that new version of a classic and very influential game. Now it's all wrapped up in every direction with bubble wrap but as you can see the book and the box have a disagreement over size and there is nothing put in place to keep the book from moving around. There's an excellent video on the Wayne's Books website about how to cheaply and effectively pack a box so that this doesn't happen. So hopefully there has been no damage. This is you know, a very diligently wrapped, bubble wrapped package. But I've, you know, we've been here before, haven't we? So what do I mean by diligently wrapped? It's all taped everywhere. If I'm trying to find purchase to peel the bubble wrap off, I've only got this, this small little hole here. And well, really nothing else. Maybe, yeah, over here on the corner, there is another small section where I can dig a finger in, but I'm going to have to use the X-Acto knife to get this open safely and and quickly. And well, maybe, no, I'm going to use the X-Acto knife. And lo, I have used the X-Acto knife freeing the deluxe edition from the bubble wrap, and we can see that it is shrink-wrapped, and we can see points of impact in this gold coppery finish. It has a metallic look to it and I'll zoom in in a minute uh, to show the texture. The spine is textured and this material that gives us this metallic look is layered over top of it. If I can ever get back into focus, there we go. We can see one of the two reading ribbons. We can see that the pages are color-coded for uh, ease of navigation and you know sending a message. And, yeah, this is a well-printed, well-packaged book. The shrink wrap isn't the, <laughs> the shrinking violet kind, which kinds of shreds at a mere touch. Uh, it will uh, stand up to shelf life if you've bought this to not use. Uh, I'm going to open it up because I intend to, to actually use it. And thank you for your consent. It's another hilarious message. But what about those corners, you say? Well, uh, I'm going to peel back the bubble wrap here to show you something that I've already discovered. And it makes me a little bit sad, but it's not the worst damage that uh, books sent to me here have encountered. And I'm really glad that I only live as far as I do from Hong Kong, but because I think if this had traveled any further, uh, the damage would have been worse. So let's just turn this around here. So we see not only the, you know, the typical kind of sm 
smooshing of a corner, but we see that there is actual impact. It's both corners, and uh, this is the impacts have traveled into the cover, and there's also the bottom corners. The spine, totally fine. There's uh, no damage done there, and, and yay for that. So this is a very well-bound book, as we've mentioned. It's uh, Smith-bound, and I'm expecting uh, a pretty solid page, uh, given the amount of color used uh, in the PDF, which we received a couple of weeks ago as backers. So once again, I see that we are out of focus, so just give me a second here. We return to focus. Okay. Over the Edge. A reimagining. The original Over the Edge seems to be cited by an awful lot of people. A very influential game. I didn't play the original Over the Edge, although I have read it. And I can see why, and I can see how. I can see the trail of influence as it spreads out like ripples in a pond. So I wanted to get this, but I didn't want or need to go all in. So what you're seeing here, this deluxe edition of the core rulebook, is really all the over-the-edge material you're going to see. I won't be getting the dice, I won't be getting a separate poster map, I won't be getting other supplements or anything like that. And I'm not sure how often I'm going to talk about it. I do, however, think it is an extremely important game. And I will be playing it. It's just a question of when. So as promised, here's the close-up view of the cover material. It's the classic cloth wrapping. It has been rubberized in a sense, though, so it has a very distinct feel. And then if you get in really close uh, with non-human vision, you can see that material lurking underneath the, the coppery color. Now, what is not showing up is that there is a sort of mottling effect uh, to this to this metallic cover, and no matter how close I get or how far away I get, I can't get it to show up in the camera. I'll try under different light. The applique, the sticker over top, also has this digitized or pixelated uh, look to it, all of which combines together for the effect that you would want for a book like this. Now, there's some games that I buy because I want to be a player. I want to run a character. A uh, famous one for me is... Uh, all for One, Régime Diabolique, and another one is Shadowrun. These are games that I really, really want to play. I get really excited about character ideas and, and that sort of thing. Well, this game is the opposite. This is the sort of, of methodology. This is the sort of gaming environment that, if I'm going to be involved at a table that's playing it, uh, it will be in the Game Master's chair that I will make my best contribution. This is a game that is strongly focused on improvisation, on twists, turns, implication, inference, mysteries that have perhaps at the moment where they are introduced no actual content, merely uh, an indication that that way lies mystery uh, it is well we keep coming back to the word improvisation and implication and while this book is incredibly solid the fictional environment in which play happens is anything but now we can see the end papers are a map and there's a a poster map of the same location stuck to the back i'm not going to remove it until i actually need it you know for safety so this 267 pages isn't giving you a specific setting, despite the existence of a map. It isn't giving you some specific place to play. It's giving you suggestions of ways to start, of a framework within which you can focus on the beginning. Everything is sparked from collaborative interaction. Characters are designed by traits that the players think are interesting that will at least tangentially or in some way match up with what the group wants to use Al Amarja for. 
there is the layer of conspiracy. There's the this layer of a almost Casablanca like, you know, everybody's here for a reason. Everybody's got secrets. Nobody really knows what they are. Everybody's got something that they would like to do or run away from or avoid or is being called toward and that sort of thing. And play is about what play ends up being about. But it uses dice. Dice to make things form out of this collaborative soup of improvisation. And it just uses simple d6s. So that's nice. Maybe the simplest way to explain is to go to the introduction, the intro to the outre. <laughs> Over the Edge is designed to highlight your creativity. The character generation rules produce unique characters that are ready to engage in the action for good and ill. The mechanics are streamlined, so you can focus on taking the story in any direction that calls to you. The setting is modern and weird, allowing you to incorporate details from the real world into your character design as a player or into your scenario design as a game master. The setting of Alamarja, described here, is full of interesting details, but... What really counts is what you and your friends come up with on your own. Then it gives us some suggestions. Continuing on. Genetically engineered assassins, transdimensional tourists, covert brainwashing programs, mind-expanding drugs, art inspired by non-human intelligences, roving baboons that want your sandwich, a state apparatus that's here for you, and secret histories of our world. All these and more can be found on Alamarja, or sometimes, instead, these things find you. So, what is over the edge? It continues, as you can see it here. The island of threat and promise. Fast conflict resolution. Inspiration from anywhere. Story forward. Characters. It is as much a way to play as something to play. <laughs>